Now, in this class, I'm going to take you into, I'm going to take you for the adjustments that we come across in banking companies. So what are the adjustments that we come across? The first one is statutory reserve. Every bank must keep some portion of its profit okay, as statutory reserve. And according to section 17 of the Banking Companies Act of 1949, every bank, every bank, whether it is a scheduled bank or commercial bank, whatever it may be, the type of bank, every bank, according to section 17, it has to transfer 25% of, of their current year profit to statutory Okay, 25%, according to section 17. And that statutory reserve, it may appear as one of the important reserves and surpluses when we go for the balance sheet. Okay. According to section 17 of the Banking Regulation Act, every bank before declaring dividend must transfer at least 25% of the current year profit to a reserve called statutory reserve. Such transfers can be stopped only with the permission of RBI. Under the new format, the adjustment is shown as follows. 25% of the current year profit shown in profit and loss account under the head, appropriations as transferred to statutory reserve. Then it is added to the opening balance of statutory reserve in schedule number two, reserves and surpluses on the, <clears throat> in the balance sheet, not on, in the balance sheet. This is one important adjustment that we have will come across when we are going for the final accounts of the banks. The second one is provision for taxation. Okay, so why the pe bank people, they have to pay the tax? Okay, it is not the tax that the bank people, they have to pay. It is on behalf of the customers. Okay, on behalf of the customers, the bank has to pay. So provision, Okay, what is the tax? They, will, they won't come to know until and unless at the end of the year. So for that purpose, the banks, they used to keep some provision and that provision is nothing but provision for taxation. Okay, this item also be added to provisions and contingencies in working notes and shown in profit and loss account under the head. Okay, expenditure. Again, it should be shown in schedule number five other liabilities and provisions under the head, others. Okay, the amount of provision for taxation should not be disclosed, but added to other items like unclaimed dividends, unexpired discounts, etc., in working notes only, and the net amount is shown. This is another thing. Next, provision for doubtful debts. So banks, they will deal with money. Yeah, naturally. They deal with money and they will lend money to the public and the public, they have to return back the money completely, whatever they had taken. If banks, sorry, if banks doubt that whether the customer is going to give the money or not, then what they will do is they'll keep some provision and that provision is nothing but provision for doubtful debts. And this provision for doubtful debts also we have to take into account. That is, this should be shown under provisions and contingencies and taken to profit and loss account under the head. There is no separate schedule for provisions and contingencies. Hence, it is done in working notes. Again, it should be deducted from cash credits, overdrafts, and loans in working notes, and the net amount should be shown in schedule number nine advances. This is the thing that we will come across. Now, rebate on bills discounted. So what is this rebate on bills discounted? Rebate on bills discounted is also known as unexpired discount or discount earned in advance, discount received in advance, unexpired discount and discount received in advance. So what is this? When you go for this rebate on bills discounted, Whatever it may be, the payment that we come across before the due date, then the person who is receiving, he has to give some 
rebate some concession and that concession given by the person to the debtor that is the debtor has to pay the money to the creditor amount okay and before the due date before the due date if the debtor if he pays the money to the creditor then it is customary for that creditor to pay some concession to the debtor that is nothing but rebate on bills discount and the same thing you will come across in banks also so that thing you have to take into account and when you go for banks you will come across opening balance of rebate on bills discounted and closing balance of rebate on bills discounted so when we come across like this what we have to do we have to add the opening balance of bills rebate in the rebate on bills discounted to the bills discounted and bills discounted in schedule number 30 in prime in form b and the closing balance you have to deduct then only the net amount you have to show that okay this is about the adjustment that we come across this is also called as unexpired discount or discount received in advance deduct from interest and discount on advances and bills and show the net amount under schedule number 13 okay again show this item under schedule number 5 other liabilities and provisions if the item is given in trial balance then it will be shown on the only in schedule number 5 that is other liabilities and provisions and others including provisions okay so this is about the various adjustments that we come across when we go for banking company and after this and after this i am going for the classification of advances for the purpose of making provisions okay so this is very very important banks have to classify their advances into four broad groups namely standard assets substandard assets doubtful assets and loss assets so regarding the banks okay advances they are classified in four categories this classification is done after taking into consideration okay the degree of well defined credit weaknesses and extent of dependence on collateral security for realization of dues so in these two cases only you come across this classification now standard asset what is a standard asset we have to see standard asset is one which does not disclose any problem and which does not carry more than normal risk attached to the business such assets are not npa that is non performing assets okay and an asset becomes non performing when it when income from it is not received by the bank for a certain period this is about a standard asset now we are going for substandard asset substandard asset is one which has been which has been classified as non performing asset for a period not exceeding 12 months okay the current net worth of the borrower or guarantor or the market value of security charge is not enough to ensure the recovery of the dues to the bank in full that is overdues okay the asset has well defined credit weaknesses which suggests the bank will sustain some loss if deficiency are not corrected in such in case of term loans those where installments of principal are overdue for period exceeding 1 year should be treated as substandard an asset where the terms of the loan agreement regarding interest and principal have been renegotiated or rescheduled after commencement of production should be classified as substandard and should remain in the same category for at least 2 years okay of satisfactory performance under the re negotiated terms this is about substandard asset now we are going for the doubtful assets doubtful asset is one which has remained in substandard category for a period of 12 months in case of term loans if the installments of the principal have remained overdue 
okay, for a period exceeding 12 months, then it should be recorded as doubtful. A loan is classified as doubtful if all the weaknesses inherent in that makes collection highly questionable and improbable. Then we'll call that thing as doubtful asset. Now, loss asset. A loss asset is one where loss has been identified by the bank or internal or external auditor or the RBI inspector, but not but has not been written off wholly or partly. Such an asset cannot be collected and it is of such little value that it is not proper to show it as a bank asset. This is nothing but loss asset. Loss asset. It may be noted that above classification is for computing the amount of provision to be made in respect of advances and not for the purpose of presentation of advances in the balance sheet. Okay, now what are the provisions that we come across? The bank should make provision on the following basis. Loss on assets, the entire amount should be written off or full provision should be made for the amount outstanding. Doubtful. Full provision to the extent of the un uh, unsecured portion should be made. The realizable value of the security available to the bank should be determined on a realistic basis. Additionally, 20 to 50% of the secured portion should be provided for depending upon the period for which the advance has been considered as doubtful as follows. Up to one year, 25% of provision. One to three years, 40%, and more than three years, 100%. Now, substandard asset. A general provision of 15% of the total should be made. Standard assets. A general, general provision of 0.25% of the total standard assets should be made. Okay. Next. Some guidelines are also there. <clears throat> I'm going to read those guidelines and I'm going to explain that. Advances secured against 10 deposits, national saving certificates, Indra Vikas Patra, Kisan Vikas Patras, surrender value of life policies are exempted from making provisions. These are exempted. That is, we should not take into account these things. Creative facilities where government guarantees are available Although overdue should not be treated as NPA, non-performing asset. In case of advances guaranteed by Export Credit Guarantee Corporation, ECGC, or by Deposit Insurance and Credit Guarantee Corporation, DICG, DICGC, DICGC, Provision is required to be made only for the balance in excess of amount guaranteed by these corporations. Like this, you'll come across the various classifications of advances that we come across. And with this, we can say that the banking companies, accounts of banking companies came to an end. And in the next video class, we are going to take into account another important topic. Until then, bye. Have a nice day.